it's alive! <laughs> so I got my tiny tape out uh, board a few weeks ago. And finally, I've been able to sort of start testing my successor approximation analog to digital converter uh, that I taped out in April on Tiny Tape Out 6. So I'd like to go through a bit um, the status there. So maybe a quick reminder. Um, so you'll find the um, Tiny Tape Out 6 on YouTube. Uh, but I think if you go to education, I'll po post the links in the description below. Um, on lecture six in my course, you will find uh, a little bit on the ADC. And also if you go to the, my YouTube channel, so th this is the ADC that I taped out on Tiny Tape Out 6. It's an ADC that I made and published in the Journal of Solid States back in 2017. Uh, originally, it was made for 22 nanometer FTSOI. It's since been ported to Sky 130. And actually, I went from, well, I guess the, this was the one I published at the Journal of Solid State. Um, that was a 9 bit. I reduced it to an 8 bit for Tiny Tape Out. Anyway, you can find all the information on that on my Tiny Tape Out uh, repository and that I'll put in the description below so you can find them. Uh, and this is how it looks. Anyway, it's a successive approximation ADC. It has a digital core, it has a comparator at the end. There's some bootstrap switches in, in the um, input. What I want to go into today is how do you test it? So first, let's have a look at the board. So this is the tiny tape out board I got. Uh, you can't see my cursor, I noticed, but I need to find a um, high precision cursor. Let's use this one. Okay, so the tiny tape out chip is the one in the middle there. So on this uh, tiny tape out board, there's a USB connector. So that's just connected to my um, uh, to my Mac. And then for an analog to digital converter, we do need some input, right? There needs to be an input to the ADC. So let's move the camera a bit closer. Maybe we can see that. So you should be able to see that to these uh, connectors, I've uh, soldered a couple of cables. Ideally, I'd connect to these, well, what's they called, these SVF connectors. I think that's the name. Uh, but I don't have any instrument for that at home. So I've just soldered on a couple of wires, uh, cut the solder bridge so that it's not connected to the pull down. And then over here, I've made a small circuit. I'll, I'll show how it works afterwards, but just realize that it goes via these wires. Let's lift it up a bit. Goes via these wires down to this uh, vera board and it's connected to a couple of RCA contacts. And that goes, well, it's a layer logic. That's what I use to capture the digital output, but you can see it goes to my docking station with a jack there. Okay, so that's the tiny tape out PCB. Pretty cool. I must say Matt and the gang, really good work on the interface. I, I really like it. Let me show you. So to fire up, you plug it into the USB and then it's powered. Um, I go to my connect to the board and then it's connected. So I guess now it's booting, blah, 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 blah. And I need to select my ADC. So just go SAR and there we go and select. Okay, so now the SAR is enabled. I've also on my board, I don't know if it's easy to see that, but uh, these, um, what are they called? Dip switches. So one of the inputs to ADC is actually to turn it on. That's the first bit. Uh, so that needs to be enabled or the zero bit actually. Once that's enabled, then it's possible to capture. So if I go to my Soleil Logic interface, I can start that and we can see that something happens. So the way I designed this ADC was that um, from past experience, it's a good idea to have a signal that comes out that tells the system when the outputs are okay. So that's what I have with this done signal, 
when the done signal goes low, then the uh, digital output is stable. So these are all the digital bits that comes out. And turns out in Saleh Logic, there is an analyzer for that. So you can actually select the different uh, bits and then say sample it on the falling edge. Okay. So uh, my input network may be a bit of an explanation. So this is the input network. It comes from the R RCA connectors. So that comes from my audio DAC on my uh, docking station. Go through a couple of bypass capacitors. I think the value I picked for these was some random component I had in my drawer. Uh, maybe it was one micro or something. Not really thought through that much. Uh, for the resistors, I think I chose 100K kilo ohm. So not throw through that much either. So that means that the voltage in the middle, so I, I pulled this from the 1.8 volt on the tiny tape out board, which means that the voltage in the middle here is around 0 0.9. And then it's pseudo differential, so it's not, that's not ideal either. Um, and a couple of decaps, that's not ideal either. They're quite big. Uh, if you can see, that's the, I also just had a couple of decaps and that's sort of the stuff that you can see, the yellow stuff there. Actually, you can't see the resistor dividers. Those are SMD components on the back side of this error board. So had I done this properly, I probably would need to make a PCB with slightly better connections. But anyway, hacking is fun. And then you have this ADC in the middle. So this is the uh, ADC inside the tiny tape out. Uh, so we have two voltages around 0 0.9 and then coupling from the audio input, I can put in an input signal. So the nice thing about uh, these days, let's actually put it down to about one megahertz um, sampling frequency. Okay, so <clears throat> what I've done is, it's a small, let's see, let's make it bigger. And let's remove uh, that one. Okay. Okay, so in code, I have a Jupyter notebook uh, importing some libraries. Turns out that there are some libraries where you can generate audio. So that's what I do here. I generate a set of samples at a certain sampling frequency, which is in this case at 44 kilohertz. Um, and I multiply by a frequency and then turn this into a set of float samples. I generate the, so the left and, and right samples here and I think this works like you have to pack them in like every other 32-bit. Um, and for stereo, it sort of uses every other. That's how I think it works. <laughs> and so I'm using two channels and putting the data in and then playing to the audio output. To capture from the Celea, you can read up on that on the Celea um, automation website. For example, this is specific for my <laughs> Salea. This is the idea of that. And capturing with the same thing, uh, falling edge on this clock state. And post-processing, uh, just doing some FFT and stuff. Well, that's not really, really important. So let's get so to running this. So I select the number of points I want to select uh, capture. Actually, it doesn't capture that number of points, but that's more to select the input frequency. Usually when testing ADCs, it's good to have an input frequency that is a in an odd FFT bin that limits the amount of smear, smearing that you get, or uh, is it called smearing? Yeah, when, when the, your input signal sort of spreads out in the FFT, um, that can be avoided if you choose the input frequency correctly. In this case, it's not really my Saleh logic is not synchronized to the uh, audio generation. So those two will slide the face according to each other. Um, and let's see, I'm starting via threads. I'm starting the audio stream, waiting for a second and then running the capture and then plotting the FFT in the beginning, uh, at the end. So when I run this Saleh logic, uh, oh, this uh, whole Jupyter notebook, uh, it'll generate the input signal and then I capture the output signal. So what we're looking at now is, let's start on the right side. We are looking at the normalized output signal. So the binary value that comes out of the ADC is 8-bit. So it's plus 
plus 127 minus 128. So I normalize that to plus minus one. So right now I can see that the input signal is about uh, one quarter the maximum. And that kind of fits also with in the FFT. Uh, we can see that it's 12 dB down, which is about a quarter. We can also see that there is some patterns here. Um, and for sure we can see in the FFT that there are some spurs. What I haven't done yet and what I need to do is figure out where these come from. Now, right now I have suspicion that they're probably coming from the input network. Um, but that's stuff to figure out. But the cool thing about this setup and our, what I really like is that it's easy to change, in this case, the volume or the amplitude of the signal going into my ADC. And we can see that with the new capture, it does change. And now it's close to maximum. The um, effective number of bits at the current point in time is about six bits, maybe. Uh, so it's not fantastic, but that's mostly due to these spurs. Uh, which I don't know whether are harmonics or patterns or anything like that. The next step would be to do an INL DNL and try to figure out, okay, is there a specific code in the ADC that goes wonky? Is there something to do with the sampling that I do in the Soleil logic? Or is it my input signal? And that's really a lot of ADC testing. It is trying to figure out, am I applying or is the ADC getting a signal that is correct? Uh, or is the error coming from the ADC itself? Right now, the performance is not where I expect it to be, which means I'm, pr well, I hope, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> the hypothesis is that it's related to the how I test it, and it's not related to my, a my ADC, because of course the design is perfect, right? <laughs> anyway, it's really cool to see what we can do with a tiny tape out and also for analog. Uh, fantastic job, guys. So yeah, I'm a big fan. So I, I've told all my students, you have to tape out on uh, tiny tape out. A cheap way to actually get circuits out there and test your theories and hypotheses and yeah, do fun stuff. So uh, that's a short update. Have a fantastic day.